We have to leverage it, but we guarantee the government, our customers, our investors, that we'll see every single tree every 30 days. We couldn't have done that ever before on small plot farming. We're not a plantation-based group. Um, basically, these are individual farmers. You don't have to read. We collect all sorts of social environmental data, as well as you know how many, how much income, uh, where they live, how many people in their households, and what they're doing. The issue right now is so this is Ms. Samge. She's 40, 44 years old. She has six people in her household, four kids. Bhutan in South Asia is noted to have the highest internal migration rate in South Asia. So all the all the kids are moving to the cities. They can't grow. She can't grow and do hardcore farming with plowing. So she has all these fallow land. We don't grow on any cultivated land for food security issues. The traceability part of our system is essentially what we do, and I'm just going to put a slide so you don't have to focus on this. Um, the traceability is the farmer is no longer anonymous in agriculture. It's where all of food is going. Companies like Nestle and Heinz, they're spending tens of millions of dollars retrofitting these systems. Basically, the you know foodborne illness, salmonella, or the melon mine in China, it's a big concern. We have complete auditability to every farmer. If you buy hazelnuts in 15 years that come from Bhutan, you can barcode it and see every single farmer, all the information on fertilizer, pesticides, completely responsible, and you can know where your nuts are coming from, from the time the seedlings are propagated until the nuts are in the store. This is something that the leverage of this, we look to put on mobile banking so that we can pay our farmers. We're looking at translating. We're not a technology company, although I feel like we're becoming one. What I'm looking for now is partners, people who can develop our back end. We are experts on the user interface side. We know how to work with the farmers, get the information. Bhutan government is extremely interested. We've trained basic trains to the National Environmental Commission, Ministries of Agriculture and Forest. The health and education ministries are lined up. We don't have the resources or time to commit to it. This will change the world. We're not creating the apps. We're using open source. We don't want proprietary technology. I go crazy. Sorry if you guys are into that space, but the Bhutanese government's spending, they don't have much money, you know, tens of thousands of dollars on proprietary technology that's worthless. We, we use basic apps, we do a little coding, and we can get all this information to present amazing. We do quality data with GAP, HACIF, all Eurogap, best practices all get put with phones. Even our truck drivers and our car drivers now have phones. We, we, we look at the carbon imprint of all our vehicles. We look at everything. We also can manage where our people are. They have a schedule. That's Accountability is the biggest issue for government. And now we have an information portal with the farmers. Before, you couldn't do that. You can get information from them, they give it for us. Anyway, that's a, that's the spiel, any questions? Unbelievable. How does it relate to happiness in So we provide smartphones to our monitors at first, but we're going to roll out to some farmers. We haven't fully done that yet. Yeah, we do training, but we have now have to train the trainers. Our class 10 people train the government. The government people who are educated get really upset that these little drop out kids. No, I wanted to know because the Bhutanese government initiative right now is that uh, go beyond the GDP calculations, yeah, uh, yes, and they have developed a sort of a happiness index in That's the right. country. Uh, so we are, we are increasing are we Bhutan's no, no, but happiness I mean, by a lot through this project, actually, and that's why we were accepted. Yes, but uh, it, in your work, how it is It's good, coming. it's challenging. I mean, the biggest issue is urban to rural migration. Uh, rural to urban migration. It's killing the, the culture. They put so much emphasis on happiness and culture. The cities can't withstand it. What's happening everywhere in the world, it's a microcosm here in Bhutan, a very small country. They're getting really killed by it. This is, this is why they accepted our project. We'll be putting such wealth into the country side that we hope people don't actually want to go to the cities. There's no jobs there. Um, and that's one of the issues. But that's, that it's, a very, it's a very difficult balance. The Prime Minister is our biggest supporter. He, he believes that this is going to really help keep that balance. Because people want people have higher expectations. They need cash before they never need it. How did you pick Bhutan and hazelnuts? Yeah. Agroclimatically, it's, the market's fantastic. We're, we're, we, have ag, we have a whole team of ag people. Um, Bhutan is very aligned with our interests. Um, I lived in the Himalayas, our founders, Tibetan speaker in the Himalayan, wanted to help, they wanted to do it. In 2008, they became a democracy. We engaged them at that time. It's really good environment. Hazelnuts only grow in certain places. Um, and it really fit our have some really good connections to Bhutan. I was the RA to the Princess of Bhutan from like across the room. Yeah. yeah, and both of the sisters went here at Stanford. And so you're obviously all well, tied in might, with them. There might be a big announcement in the next year or two about someone even more important. But I'm not supposed to talk about <laughs> No, I'm going to ask the same question. How do you think Bhutan? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, so the project's about hazelnuts.